What's up, y'all, and welcome back to Fork and Photo. My name is Jade, and today we are going to be making an oven roasted chicken. Let's go. To start out, you will need a young chicken that is between three and five pounds. My chicken has already been washed and buttermilk brined. I have dropped my brine down in the description box because you want to do that, boo. First, we are going to make an herb butter to go underneath the chicken skin. So get one stick of salted butter that is softened, add it to a bowl, along with half of a shallot that has been diced really fine. Three to four cloves of garlic that have been minced, not the jarred mint stuff, like use a knife. And I have some finely chopped rosemary and thyme. One sprig of rosemary, two sprigs of thyme, whatever you feel. Followed up by some white pepper and some onion powder. As a side note, if you only have dried rosemary and thyme, use what you got, boo. It's fine. And yes, more pepper. So some freshly cracked black pepper, you know, until it feels good, until the ancestors say stop, until you, you can't breathe. Whatever works for you. And then some Aleppo pepper. You can also use chipotle pepper or chili powder or red pepper flakes. And then, you know, mix. It is going to be delicious, okay? And now it's time for my favorite part. Yep, it's time to season. We're going to make it in a little bowl this time. So add about mm, two teaspoons of salt. Followed up by some Old Bay. No measurements. That's all I had. And then some parsley. Followed up by smoked paprika. And one of my absolute favorites, some sage. Yes, yes, you got to have sage. Just a little bit, okay? Just a little bit. And you should know I'm not seasoning anything without onion powder and garlic powder. You need both of them. Yes, yes, you do. Also add in some cumin because cumin is everything, <laughs> okay? And then some white pepper. Again, it's your mouth, so don't go overboard. And last but not least, some chicken bouillon. And that's just a granulated chicken bouillon or poultry seasoning if you have that. And then mix it together. Since your chicken has been out while you were doing all the butter and the seasoning, it should be up to room temperature and completely dry. If it's still wet, you know, dry it off. We will be spatchcocking the chicken, so flip it over to its back, breast side down, and you'll need a pair of kitchen shears or a very sharp knife. I like to start with the neck closest to me and begin cutting on one side of the backbone. It's in the very middle of the chicken and you will be able to fill it with your hand. Try your best to cut in a straight line along the backbone. If at any time it gets too difficult and you can't reach the back or the butt of the chicken, just go ahead and turn your cutting board around to make it easier for you to access it as I'm doing here. And then just begin to cut the remaining portion to the side of the backbone until you can see the inside of the chicken as you have here look ta-da take a look inside your chicken and locate where you need to cut on the opposite side it's much easier once you have one portion cut and then just begin to remove the rest of the backbone and boom there we go you can save that in the freezer makes a great stock just don't throw it away that's wasteful now that you have removed the backbone of the chicken Flip it back over, and now it's time to break the breastbone. You can just fold it down or do like the CPR maneuver just to break the breastbone so that the chicken will lie flat in your pan. Now we will begin to gently remove the skin from the meat. You slowly want to, either using your hand or a spoon, slowly lift the skin from the actual chicken meat. To make sure that you do this gently, otherwise you will rip the skin, as you will see <laughs> shortly. Um, and just do this along the breast, as well as along the thighs and the drumstick of the chicken. This will allow us to stuff the herb butter underneath the chicken skin that will allow all of that butter and goodness, see the rip? There's the rip. Allow that butter and goodness to seep into the chicken, and believe me, it's good, y'all. I wouldn't lie to you. There's your herb butter. Using either a spoon or your hand, begin to push the herb butter and slather it underneath the chicken skin. Get all the thighs, the drumstick, the breast, all of that. Just can use all that butter until it is underneath the chicken skin, okay? If you have a little bit left over, that's fine. When we flip the bird over, you can add the remaining herb butter to the under portion of the chicken. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but it's what I called it, the under portion, the other side. 
Once you're done, wash your hands, grab your olive oil, drizzle it along the chicken, and then rub the olive oil in, you know, wash your hands again, and then grab your seasoning and begin to season liberally on the under portion of the chicken. You will see that I did this opposite when I recorded it, so excuse me, I'm telling you the right way. So do what I say, not as I do. That's what my mama used to tell me. Flip your chicken over and first thing first, drizzle your chicken with olive oil and rub before seasoning. I didn't do this here. I don't know what was going through my brain, but drizzle it with olive oil first. Rub the olive oil on the chicken, then season the chicken liberally. If you like to rub your seasoning into your meat, you can do so. I like to tap gently, especially since I did it backwards in this video. But once you are done with the chicken and the olive oil, it should look like this. Your oven should be preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I will be roasting my chicken in a cast iron skillet, but you can also use a baking sheet or any type of oven steak dish. Just make sure it has been treated with some butter or some oil. And here I am just being extra, picking up any extra seasonings that were on the cutting board and just slathering it all over the chicken because you can't eat a cutting board, so season it. Get all the seasonings off. Don't let it go to waste. You want that on the chicken. And now your chicken is ready to go in the oven at 425 degrees for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, remove your chicken from the oven. Reduce the oven down to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then baste your chicken with all of the juice that has seeped out. Just to make sure it is going to be beautiful and golden brown and succulent, you know. And because that's butter and oil and deliciousness that you want to keep your chicken moist. So baste it while the oven is reducing down its heat to 400 degrees. Once you're done, you're going to put it back in the oven for an additional 20 to 25 minutes. Or until the internal temperature of the chicken is 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And then, guess what, baby? You are done. Your chicken should look like this. It may look a little bit different because I did do the oil in a different step than you. But allow for your chicken to rest by removing it from the cast iron skillet and placing it on a wooden cutting board. And allow the chicken to sit there for about 10 to 15 minutes before you cut it. If you cut it too soon, all of your chicken juices will run out and your chicken will be dry. So after it's rested, just go ahead and chop your chicken up into pieces and enjoy. Because let me tell you, do you see that juice? Yes, yes, yes. You already know what to do. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram at Fork and Photo. But make sure that you eat good, y'all. Until next time.